Hey, Andre, a swing and a miss. What? Or a swing and a home run. That's right, guys. We are talking about unforced errors and home runs in the trucking world. Yep. Today, we're going to do a very special list. We're going to give you the top three unforced errors that every truck manufacturer in America has made over the last several years. Yes, and also big wins. And the big wins. So let's get right to it, Andre, and let's start with Nissan. What do you got on your list? Yes, so Nissan recently, several years ago, introduced the Cummins Titan XD. It was their diesel play, and they launched the new Titan, the updated Titan, with that Cummins V8. And they no longer make it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's been discontinued for 2020. And so that's Swing an, and a miss. That's an unforced error. So what was wrong with that? So, so it's a 5-liter V8, yeah. it was made it to a 6-speed automatic transmission, and we've tested it in every possible conceivable way. Yeah, so, you know, it's very simple in, I'm going to go layman's terms, right? Uh, diesel is torquey and, and efficient. And efficient. That engine was neither. <laughs> and go. So the Titan XD with the Pro 4X package, it has a GVWR, of 8,990 pounds. Max towing is 11,784 pounds. Right. And maximum payload is 1,733 pounds. Okay, eight minutes, 44 seconds. And our gas mileage now is 3.9 miles per gallon. Well, the torque number was 555 pound-feet of torque. When you look at the three-quarter ton trucks, over 900 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, somebody at Nissan guessed that there was space in between the full-size truck and the heavy-duty truck for a unique tweener truck. And the fact is that apparently there wasn't because they're no longer building it. So what's another unforced error? Uh, no Warrior Off-Road oh. Nissan Titan. Yeah, remember, remember that concept? Yeah, yes. we were in Detroit when they rolled out the Warrior concept. I mean, that thing was just perfectly timed right when the Raptor was, you know, steamy. Red hot. Yeah, yeah, red hot. And I was lusting for it. It was gorgeous. It took basically a regular truck and made it sexy and Big. lustworthy. You know, obviously with this front end, we're trying to say that this truck is more of this suit of modern armor, where the truck is much more robotic and technical in this execution from, you know, stepping up from the uh, production version. But with this headlight, it's meant to be, again, like that sinister, menacing look of these, this warrior in, in front view. It's like the truck is a helmet. It was actually, the warrior concept truck was based on the XD, but they made it wider, right? They took the recipe from Ford's book. Basically, wide fenders, wide stands, a lot of suspension travel, lift, lights. So close on Everything. Right. So but, close. But it was a concept and no production. Yeah, they never built it. Why? To this day, I still, I would, if they built it today, I would go buy it. And also, it could have lifted the entire brand, right? Course, it could yeah, have lifted yeah, the entire yeah. truck brand for Nissan. Yep. Finally, final unforced error for Nissan, no new Nissan Frontier. Uh, you know... How, how many years has it been? You know, I, I think that every time they sell a Frontier because the tooling has been paid for, the engineering has been paid for, it's like printing money. But at some point, you could be part of this wave that's sweeping the country of mid-sized trucks, and yet they're really not part of it because it's the fuel economy of the truck, it's not good, it's the design, design no it's not good, it's, it's, just, it's just old. I never thought I would be off-roading in Moab in a two-wheel drive Nissan Frontier, but it's actually a lot of fun. This Onion Creek Trail is awesome. Um, this truck with no ATV in the bed is so lightweight. It's like 3,700 pounds and it feels like a little ATV actually. Well, it has some good qualities to it, yeah. right? It's affordable, it's right? It's affordable. It's simple, but, but it's still. It's reliable. Yeah, but now we have the new Gladiator, the new Ranger, the updated Tacoma, right? All these new trucks are here in the frontier. We're still wishing for it to come. And you know, the irony of all this conversation is I would still buy one because it's such a good truck. So yes. what's, what's the... The big win. Yeah, what's the big win? What's the The big run? win. Pro 4X off-road package for Nissan. For sure. No matter if it's a Nissan Frontier or a Nissan Titan or the XD Titan, it's just a good value, you know, good shocks, good suspension. Yeah, you get, uh, you get all the off-road yeah. goodies for a relatively affordable price. And you get the stickers, and you get the look, and you get the locking rear diff, and you get, you know, every skid place, everything you'd want in a Pro 4X at an affordable price. What more could you want? That's a win. All right, let's move on. What's next? Toyota is next. Toyota brand of trucks. All right, let's go uh, with the misses first. Yes, so the first unforced error, no new Tundra. Yeah. So the Tundra was redesigned in 08. 
Then they updated it a couple times with mild, you know, uh, facelifts, interior changes, some technology changes. But the truck is basically still has the 5.7 liter V8, the gas V8, six speed automatic, and it uh, now has the worst fuel economy in the class. Yeah, Toyota is notoriously conservative when it comes to uh, their design and redesign. That's because they want to keep the reliability high. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is by not, by not changing it. Hey guys, great news. We have a 2020 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro in army green. Mwah. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I mean, it's an old design and the data is in. This truck is no longer relevant. Now this has the 5.7 liter V8, right? Yes. What's its rating? 381 horses. Not bad. 401 pound-feet of torque. Uh -huh. Mwah. Six-speed automatic transmission? Yeah. Guess what? There are several trucks with the older engine that have slotted over a million miles. A million miles. That is serious reliability baked in. So you take the loss on the MPG, you gain the reliability with a powertrain and transmission setup that cannot be beaten. I yes. think while that works in the car segment, the truck segment is so hyper competitive, right? That you can't take that same strategy and use it and be successful and sell a lot of trucks. And I think the numbers show it. Yeah, and their, their sales are actually declining. They've been kind of flying kind of level, right? They're selling about 10,000 Tundras a month. But now recently, in recent months and quarters, their numbers have declined. And everybody, all of you guys are saying, when is the new Tundra coming? Hopefully soon. Yes, hopefully very soon. <laughs> What's next? The next Unforced Air is the new Tacoma, actually, and specifically the 3.5 liter V6, the gas engine, yeah. and how it mates to the new transmission, the yeah. six-speed. Like the the 3.5 is fine, and the transmission is fine, but when you put them together, the truck doesn't seem to know what gear it wants to be in. <laughs> and know, they've, like, they've tried to tune this, right? Yes. They've been tuning it for 2020. They, they say they've made some improvements. But we've thought it, especially in the mountains, it's just hunting for gears, it's, right? It's one of those trucks that's always like going 10 miles an hour slower than you think it should be. And you're like, how is that happening? But also um, the V6, the 3.5 liter, is not as powerful as some competitor no. trucks. And it's not particularly fuel efficient either. So it's not fuel efficient, it's not powerful, it's not particularly torquey. Yeah. Another unforced air on Toyota, the, the third one, is TRD Pro. Mm. So it's been a fairly successful nameplate for them, yep. the TRD off-road uh, name, but the Pro. In the Tundra. In the Tundra specifically, no locker. Yes. Uh, yes, they have a small front suspension lift, but it's not as good as it could be. No, you know, I mean, you get the great exhaust, but let's face it, an exhaust sound is not particularly useful when you're stuck in deep mud, whereas a rear locker would be, and more importantly... Or every, front locker. Every other truck, full-size truck in the segment has a rear locker. In, selectable. Or, I mean, GM doesn't. Right, but still. But, it but has still, one. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's a pretty big miss for a segment that is highly competitive. And what's the home run, Andre? The home run is that Tacoma is a sales leader still mm -hmm. in the midsize segment. Yeah, they own even, that segment. Even though the Ranger is there, the yeah. Gladiator is now there, Tacoma is still selling huge numbers, huge numbers. And I think part of that is if you buy a Tacoma and then you go to resell it five years later, it's still worth a huge amount. So I think yeah. people, even because of all these issues that we pointed little out. Little small issues, issues yeah. People still want it because they know it'll retain its value because it's very reliable. Well, this is uh, certainly sandy and rocky and rough. Yep. Uh, and so far, the truck is uh, not complaining one bit. Nope. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty steep, dude. It's working. It's working pretty hard. I really like the fact that the suspension setup on this is so forgiving. I think it's one of the better setups out there. And also, this trail really can't take anything much bigger than this truck. All right, let's yep. get to the big three. Let's start with FCA. Yep, Ram truck specifically. Uh, the first unforced air is the Eco Diesel V6. It's mm. their half-ton 1500 diesel engine. They had really big issues with emissions uh, scandal in the previous generation of the truck. Yeah. The new one is out. Um, we've tested the new one, and it's not as great as I think it could be. There's still a small delay. In, yeah, in that, in that engine. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, you, you have one opportunity to make a first impression, and that opportunity was squandered. Let's face it, right? It got hit with uh, emissions uh, that FCA to this day still says were within the 
the parameters. EPA guidelines, yeah. but the EPA disagrees. Uh, and then the fix actually made it, according to a lot of our readers, more Andrew, delayed. More, yeah, made the turbo lag even worse. This is on the older engine. Yeah, yes. yeah. And so uh, it's just you know, I mean, just get it right the first time, and you don't have to go and fix it. All right. So I just clicked our tow haul mode. Okay. So we're good there. And the Eco Diesel is a five thousand dollar option, right, for the tradesman. But here's a cool thing: it's available in every trim level. Every oh, I like big. that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and and the engine price comes down if you get like the more luxurious truck, like right. a Longhorn or a Limited or something yeah. else. Yeah, I think Ford with their diesel, they learned that only putting the top end you lose sales. Yeah. What else? Uh, the next one is no Dakota, no midsize truck. Yeah, you know, FCA does have the Gladiator, but let's face it, that's kind of in its own little world, right? Lifestyle. It's a right. lifestyle truck. It probably it doesn't compete directly with trucks like the Ranger, the Tacoma, It's uh, just more Colorado. expensive. It's a little bit yeah, more expensive. Yeah, so yeah. So, you know, a, a Dakota would be good. Uh, and I think because of this current craze of mid-sized truck buying, they mm -hmm. would have made a lot of money if they had built one. And a lot of people still, you know, think fondly of the old Dakotas. Yes. They had V8 engines. Exactly. They had different options. They were actually good, usable trucks. So I think that's kind of a miss. They could have sold a lot more trucks. Uh, the next unforced error is the e-torque. Yeah. This is their mild so, so, hybrid system. So e-torque stands for, I don't know what, <laughs> efficiency and torque, right? Or electricity and, and torque. torque. And it's neither. It's neither efficient nor torquey. So <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of baffling because you would think that with e-torque you would get better fuel economy and more torque, and you get neither of those. This is an electric motor that sits under the hood and it's connected to the driveline via the serpentine belt. The other weird thing about it is it's basically an electric system that's bolted on to whatever engine they put it on. And many of the other manufacturers actually incorporated into electric motors into something. the transmission or somehow in between the transmission and the engine. So we have a lot of experience with this. Right. Uh, for the last year, we had the Ram Rebel yeah, with truck the e with an e-torque system. So it has some good qualities to it. it it's smooth, yeah. right? So it's got the start-stop feature, makes it very smooth. It kind of smooths out your transmission shifts, but it doesn't add any torque to the bottom line doesn't add any power well, to the bottom line. Let's face it, 48 volt systems, which this yes. is, are becoming hi highly popular, right? So um, it, you'd be hard to find a German car now without a 48 right, volt right. system that actually does increase fuel economy and does actually- And does boost some power. power and yeah. actually allows the vehicle to go on pure electricity. E-torque, none of that. Yes, we were disappointed by the fuel economy numbers, but this truck provided so much fun and so much capability, off-road towing, and everything else we asked it to do. And I am, in the end, quite happy with that. The grand slam for FCA and Ram yeah. is their design and sales gains. Yes. They're actually uh, pressuring GM yes. for that second uh, sales leadership's place. And their designs interior and exterior are just amazing. Yeah, I think uh, you can't deny it, the fact that their interiors, I think right now, are the best in the truck biz. They changed the game. Yes. You know, they so took it to another level. Yeah, so Ford interiors are there, GM yeah. interiors, etc., etc. And Rem just said, this is the bar now. Yeah, they set the bar, yeah. especially with that big 12-inch screen and the, even the materials and the design that they use, right? No longer is it a sea of black or brown plastic or gray plastic. It's just really a pleasant place to be. It's almost like being in a luxury sedan in some ways. Yes. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, who's next? Next manufacturer, GM. All right, what General, is General General Motors. GM been up to where they have kind of missed the ball? Speaking of interiors, yes. they recently missed the ball in interiors. Yeah, they were <laughs> the opposite of that spectrum. <laughs> so, so, small he, screens, so, a lot of plastic. Here was the old truck, right? Yeah. And you compare it to the new one, the 2019s and 2020s. Yeah. And if unless you're looking at details, first mm. of all, you cannot tell it's different. Pretty much. You, you know, you know when the headline is that they now have vents in the rear seats for the <laughs> rear seat occupants, you know that they're really not pushing the envelope very much. So they could improve. And the new Tahoe is amazing, actually. Yeah. Have you seen the new Tahoe? I have. Now, guys, it is busy here, so forgive the crowd. But I'll get up here and get some clean shots of this Z71 for you. So there she is, right there. Nice red tow hook. The fascia you're looking at there is unique. Now, the approach angle here is gonna be the best you're gonna get 
out of any Tahoe available. Now there is a total of five screens in this thing. So right there, you have your center stack screen. Over there, you have your instrument cluster screen. That's an eight inch screen. And then up top, you can kind of see the reflection there. There's a 15 inch head up display. The head up display is absolutely massive. And yes, that is class exclusive for the Tahoe. Maybe they're moving in the right direction. Uh, no answer to the Ford Raptor is the next one. That is the most baffling one of all, yes. you know. Uh, we don't, Ford doesn't report how many uh, Raptors they sell versus F-150s, but people on the line have emailed us and said that it's like one in 10. So yeah. let's say they sell around half a million F-150s every right. year, which they do. That's 50,000 50, Raptors. Raptors, which is, you know, a pure money maker for them. And yet yes. GM has sat on their hands for the last, what, it's almost 10 years 10 now, years. and yes. not answered that. Yes, they did do the ZR2 and they did the Bison, which I applaud, yeah. but why no full-size truck? Yeah. Yes, yeah. they have the Trail Boss. Which is Still, a, it's a it's two enough inch, for a package. It's, it's a two inch block lift, yeah. right? It's a little block that they put to give yeah. it a lift. Yes. I don't get it, and I know most people don't take Raptors off-road, but that's not why people buy them. They buy Except them because the they're cool, yeah. yeah. The final miss for GM is in the heavy duty segment. For years, they, they were not, fighting that heavy duty ratings were, where Ram and Ford were 30,000 pounds or above for heavy duty trucks. Yeah, I don't know how many press conferences you went to where you know somebody at GM would stand up and say, our buyers only tow 15,000 pounds or whatever it is, so why do we want to build a truck? And every time they said that, uh, Ford sold. <laughs> A little angel got its wings. <laughs> a little Ford got a sales notch, and finally they said, "We got to go to war." And they and they go, finally did. did it. Yeah, finally. But, yeah. but why for so many years? And I, I agree. It's like uh, the problem with towing thirty thousand is you need a CDL, and logically most people don't have CDLs, commercial driver's licenses. True, true. But once again, it's like the Raptor. People don't buy it because of what they use it for. They buy it because it's got the biggest cojones. In the truck on the truck line, but it's real too. People use them for work. Yeah. So those working people do have CDLs, and yeah. they need the higher capacities. Boom. Uh, finally, a win for General Motors. Yeah. What's their recently, win? Yeah. Is their Colorado Canyon and ZR2 line? Yes. Uh, they came back to the market in a strong way, redesigned trucks, and they're very successful. With yeah. They, I mean, they've been selling over 200,000 units when you combine the GMC and yeah. the Colorado. Yeah. Uh, that's incredible. You know, everybody thought the mid-size truck segment was dead, and GM rolled the dice, and you know, when that was about five years ago, yeah, hit and now big, hit big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm using a different analogy. Let's swung and hit it out of the ballpark. Yeah, there you go. Finally, Ford. Yes. I, I think one of them is actually taking the Ranger out of the market. Uh, the Ranger was missing from United States from 2011 to 2018, for about what eight, seven or eight years. And Ford said, yeah, F-150 would solve that, you know, yeah. uh, they, they, need. They basically didn't want to cannibalize sales. They thought From that, F-150. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so they, they wanted to make that the star of the opera and get rid but of people, all the supporting people players. Missed it. People, people missed it. And finally, the new Ranger is here, but it's not truly an all-new truck. You know why they missed it? What? Because it's hard to park. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to park a big truck. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, and finally, the, the new Ranger is here. Yeah. It's selling pretty well. But it's not 100% all new. It's using some of the you know components yeah, we, from other markets. Yeah, we've right? had a long conversation with Ford, and me and Ford <laughs> PR disagree. <laughs> so Ford and PR says so, it's brand yeah. new. I, I went to Geneva back in like 2014 and saw a, uh, a wild track sitting on the stage, and I got to tell you, Andre, it looked very similar <laughs> to the Ranger that's here. The design-wise, yeah. interior-wise. Yes, yes. Yes, Ford put the, the new technology lines, yes. and engine and everything and else. Steel in bumpers. There. But yes. to my eye, at least, it looked very similar. And I think they might update the Ranger soon. Yes. So we'll see. Uh, the F-150 diesel. That's the a swing and a miss. Power Stroke 3 liter, it's a miss. First of all, they launched it. It was an updated engine that was in Land Rover, right? Yes. Land Rover diesel. They changed it a little bit for the truck duty. But they put it for customers, for consumers, in their highest trim levels. So How much was it? And platinum. And if you went to the dealership, these trucks were like 70,000, 75,000 bucks. How much was the diesel option if you want to get it? It's about, it was about 4,500 bucks. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I mean, Ford had like first impression, right? Yeah. They, they needed to make a strong one, but they only put it in luxury trucks and it was too expensive and it was hard to sell. Anyway, that's, that's a mess. It's, it's, a, it's a little footnote now. Yeah. Uh, no V8 Raptor is the next one. So they redesigned the Raptor, right? It's, it's good, it's successful, but enthusiasts want yeah, you know, Ford walked away from uh, cars, and in a lot of ways, they walked away from non, 
naturally aspirated engines, right? All turbos. All turbos yeah. all the time. And I think, especially in the Raptor, uh, it hurts sales because just something about the Raptor and the V8 that, that it's as, about as American as, you know, apple pie and Ford. And baseball. special episode of the Fastlane Truck for one reason. Oh, 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 this is ridiculous. EcoBoost is tunable. Is, is tunable, but, but, but now there are companies that actually put V8 engines into Raptors yeah, or build their own Raptors. Much more satisfying right. to have you know, that, that old kind of lumpy V8. And you know, when you're piping exhaust note into the cabin of the new Raptor, you probably don't have the ideal exhaust note. That would be my guess. Yes. And finally, the win for Ford yes. is sales leadership. Yeah, they maintained uh, it still. Yeah, uh, no matter how much you know, Ram or GM or anybody else is really fighting and selling, uh, Ford just has the numbers yep. for leadership. They're still you know, the number one selling truck in America, uh, and they'll say it's been forever. You can argue that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but nevertheless, in a highly competitive, yes. I would say hyper-competitive, market where trucks are discounted and every trick in the book is used uh, to get people to buy trucks. Uh, you know, you gotta hand it to Ford. They're still number one in terms of just sheer numbers of trucks sold in America. Well, that's it? Yeah, that's it. And guys, we know that a swing and a miss is not uh, an unforced error, but it's really hard to do that in an <laughs> unforced error sort of way, <laughs> visually. So we yes. went with it. Uh, thanks for watching. And remember, if you have truck questions, which a lot of you do, every Friday, we do a show called What Truck Should I Buy? Andre and Kent come on and answer your questions. So come back to TFL Now on Fridays at noon Pacific. Submit your questions and we'll answer them because yep. we get so many we can't answer all of them. And go back to tfltruck.com for my news views and the real world truck reviews. Ciao. Happy New Year.